Okay, so here we go, cardiovascular system. We're talking about um, the structures and uh, the layers and stuff of the heart. Okay, so the heart is about the size of your fist, and it's located pretty much right below your sternum, so in the middle of your chest. Um, but it leans slightly to the left um, just because that side is a little bit bigger and then your lungs um, also. Um, it's a very powerful muscle, and its contraction is generated by electrical stimulus. So the layers of the heart um, include the pericardium. So that is a double-walled sac that um, helps keep the um, heart cushioned. So you have a superficial fibrous pericardium. You have a deep two-layer serous pericardium. You have the parietal layer line that lines the internal surface. You have the visceral layer that lines the outer surface of the heart. And these are separated by the pericardial cavity. Okay, so the, the um, heart muscle itself is called a myocardium. Okay, and in, this is the inside of the heart right here, just to give you a reference. Okay, so the inside layer of the heart is called the endocardium. The heart wall itself is the myocardium. Then on the outside, you've got the... Um, pericardium, the epicardium. This is fluid filled and this helps keep the heart beating in a friction free environment. And then on the outside you've got this tougher um, outer fibrous pericardium that again is kind of giving a protection holding that pericardial fluid in place. So the pericardium protects and anchors the heart, prevents overfilling of the heart with blood, and allows for the heart to work in a relatively friction-free environment. During heart surgery, however, um, if the heart is opened, then the pericardial sac is cut, and that fluid is um, leaked out. And then once it is gone, it is gone forever. It's not something that will reheal and form again. It's gone forever. Okay, so the myocardium is the cardiac muscle forming the bulk of the heart. And it's not exactly, um, it doesn't, when you actually look at the fibers, um, they don't look like what most people think the heart looks like. And this causes the heart to actually twist when it's beating. So it's not this um, um, exactly where the top half squeezes and the bottom half squeezes. The bottom half is actually twisting and it's really shooting that um, blood out to the aorta. Okay, so the vessels returning blood to the heart come in through the superior and inferior vena cava and the right and left pulmonary veins. The vena cava is coming from the body. The pulmonary veins are coming from the heart, so they're returning to the heart. When it's leaving the heart, it goes through the pulmonary trunk, which goes to the right or left, going to each lung, or it goes to the ascending aorta, and it can go through three branches, the brachiocephalic, the left and right common carotid, and the subclavian arteries. Arteries always carry blood away from the heart, and veins carry blood towards the heart. And important to note that pulmonary refers to the lungs and coronary refers to the heart. Okay, so this picture is a little bit blurry. Um, we will give you this picture as well, um, a better copy of it. Um, in class. Um, so this, this one you can see the different veins. This is the back of the heart and all these veins so the heart itself also needs um, oxygen and nutrients and all that kind of stuff. So it's fed by coronary veins and this is often the spot where heart attacks happen. So when you have a clogged artery that causes a heart attack it's going to be in one of these veins. So the atria are the receiving chambers of the heart, and each atria has a protruding oracle. So blood enters the right atria from the superior or in, in, inferior vena cava and from the coronary sinus. Then blood enters the left atria from the pulmonary veins. The ventricles are the discharging chambers. Um, papillary muscles and trabeculae carne muscles mark the ventricular walls. The right ventricle pumps blood into the pulmonary trunk, going to the lungs, and the left ventricle pumps blood into the aorta, going to the body. 
So, kind of following along, the right atrium goes to the tricuspid valve, which goes to the right ventricle. The right ventricle goes to the pulmon goes through the pulmonary semilunar valve, which leads to the pulmonary arteries, which leads to the lungs. Picks up oxygen, comes back from the lungs to the heart through the pulmonary veins, into the left atrium. From the left atrium through the bicuspid valve, also called the mitral valve, into the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, it goes through the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta, and from the aorta into systemic circulation to the rest of your body. And so here you can kind of see a picture of that, um, and the arrows kind of show you the direction of blood flow. Coronary circulation is circulation to the heart itself, and again, this is where heart attacks happen. So one of these arteries or veins gets blocked with plaque uh, or even a blood clot and that can lead to um, total blockage of blood flow and if you've got a total blockage that causes a heart attack. So blood flow can't get to the heart muscle itself and so it starves it of oxygen and it can't work. So you'll have what's called a coronary bypass, and they'll take a graft using usually your saphenous vein that comes out of your leg and kind of jump over the blocked artery to help restore blood flow.